All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy, Mick Thomas here. How are you? Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, thanks for sharing and coming on back. Uh, I am exhausted, I look ridiculous, um, I got into a fight with a gay man on this trip, but I'll talk to you about that in a second, we'll get into that in a moment, but... Check out my other podcast with my good buddy, Corey Brooks, The Manxiety Show. We haven't had a new episode up in a while, but the old ones are still there, available for you to watch and to listen to wherever you get your podcast from, Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, blah, 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 wherever you want to get to see him. Come see me live, in person, see my face. It's going to look better, I promise you. Right now, it's just deprived of many hours of sleep. Uh, this Friday... This Friday I and Saturday, which is, what, the 24th and 25th, 25th, 26th, I don't know. Yeah, 24th and 25th. I am in Mohegan Sun Casino, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Two shows. Come on, see me. I'd love to see you, Pennsylvania. And then the next night, Florida. Back down to Florida. Weren't you just there, Mick? Yes, I was. I love it so much. I'm going back down again on the Orlando Improv on the 26th, I'll be right there. Uh, tickets on sale for that now. They are going fast for the Orlando Improv. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie to you on that one. Uh, what a whirlwind uh, week I've been having. Right? I went from... Uh, where did I go? I've been... Fucking like Boston. I went from Boston, came back to New York. New York. I went to Chicago. Chicago down to Nashville, no, Chicago down to Orlando, to Florida, to New Smyrna Beach, New Smyrna Beach, to Nashville, Nashville, I am home, I just got home 20 minutes ago, hence the look, hence why I look like I do, so let me get into some things for you, I got a lot to cover on this episode, so I want to try condense the last week into a 20 minute, 25 minute podcast, my cat's being a cunt, what do you want cat? What do you want? I just fed you upstairs and you didn't want it. And now you're down here. Cat never gives me any affection. Couldn't have given a shit when I came home. Right? The dog was all over me. Cat doesn't care. Now there she is crawling at my feet. Maybe she'll jump up and show herself, but I don't care. Um, yeah, cat people. I don't know why you're cat people. They're just users. Anyway, they're like they're like narcissistic girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever you're into. Right? They just they only want you when they want something. We've all dated someone like that. That's what cats are. Permanent ex-girlfriends. So, Chicago, first of all, may I say, uh, it was great to see everybody that came out to see us at Zany's, Zany's in Chicago. You were fantastic. You really, really were. We packed the living shit out of Zany's. The staff at Zany's are great. And to every audience member that came out, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very much appreciated. I got in there uh, from the second I got in to Chicago felt very very welcoming i do appreciate that um weird some things about chicago i'm walking around it was warm it was warm right and everybody talks about how cold chicago is chicago is very cold freezing cold you wouldn't survive in chicago that's the type of cold you don't want to be around and I, i'm walking around and i i swear i had a t-shirt on walking on a t-shirt and these people were still in those big parka coats you know those big furry ones that cover your face like this Walking around and those women like huddled into their into their collars, just like snuggled into their collar collars like that. I thought maybe Chicago isn't cold. Maybe they're just pussies. Maybe people in Chicago are just pussies. They're just not used to like a real wet. And maybe this is as cold as it gets to them, which is cold, but not fucking as bad as I've heard it to be. But anyway, Chicago, good looking place. Good looking place. Really was. People were very friendly. I uh, had a good time. Now, on the way home, so uh, uh, myself and Finnerty, we took an Uber together back to the train station. We were flying out of separate airports. And uh, so I get on a train. I get on the train, right? Now, we were going to Uber back to the whole airport, but we wanted to hang out together as much as we could because to go separate directions. And um, Kat, what are you doing? Get down from there. You fucking break something. Anyway, so I get on the train. Uh, it's a subway. The subway goes all the way to O'Hara Airport, if you've ever been. So it goes all the way to O'Hara Airport. And um, it's a typical subway, just like you would see in New York. 
I didn't know Chicago had had a subway, and it runs from underground up into a, the, the blue line, and now it's it becomes like it turns into like a regular train, not turns in as in like a transformer. It doesn't just go from subway train to <laughs> Autobots roll out, and now it's like a regular above ground train. It's just that happens to be the line. So I'm on the train is packed out. It is packed out. So. I'm standing, I'm holding on to one of the things, right? Just like this. I got one, one of the things up here and I'm holding on to it. You know, you're on your train and you're moving around and you don't want to fall. You don't want to make eye contact. Most people are in their phone. I wasn't because I had holding on with this arm and holding me bag on the other one. Didn't want it on me back because someone started rifling through me shit. I don't know why I'm facing forward. Someone's going through, taking all my stuff out of the bag. So bag going down between my legs, holding it with my other hand. Don't want to put it on the ground. Ground's filthy. It's a Chicago subway train. And uh, Kat, what are you doing? Seriously, mate. What are you doing? Anyway, so I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to uh, leave the bag in the ground. So I'm, I'm standing there now. There's a, there's, a, there's a guy and a girl sitting next to me. Sitting next to me on on the, they're sitting right down. So they're 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 crotch level. Their eyes are at the same level of as my crotch. And um, so what's happening is I I'm they're they're I, sorry I'm losing my train of thought. This cat is fucking not. What are you doing? And now the furnace is going to come on. Uh, now the dog is off. For fuck's sake. <sighs> Anyway, so I'm on the train. Let me do a refresh. I'm holding on to the thing. And all of a sudden, so there's a guy there and there's a girl there, right? Now, all of a sudden, the guy takes out his phone and he points it, like, up to my face. Like, he holds it up to here, right? So, to me, it looks like, if I'm trying to describe it, so I'm above him. He's sitting down. So, he's pointing the phone up at me. So, but in my head, I go, well, he's not doing anything. He's taking a selfie. He's taking a selfie of how stupid he looks in his bandana. He has a, he had a, like, a $100 bill bandana. Remember when COVID came out first and everybody just says, I'll go to the supermarket with a bandana. That'll that'll solve everything because that'll prevent you from getting the old fucking COVID. So he had a just, a, a, and I thought he was maybe taking a picture, sending it off, sending it off. So then he holds up and he takes, he takes his picture and he, he doesn't, listen, I've taken pictures of myself on a train, on a plane, uh, on a bus, and I've taken pictures of myself, right? I've posted them online, I've sent them to people, whatever it is. I've, I, here's what I do. When I take a picture, I hold the phone close to me chest. Why? Have you ever heard that expression? He holds his cards close to his chest. It uses a metaphor for life. Also comes from a game of poker where nobody can see your fucking cards. So if I take a picture, I don't want anyone around me looking at it. Right? I don't want to, like, I got friends who send me dick pics. I don't want people to see. So I'm holding the phone. He doesn't hold the phone. He puts it right down on his lap. And what is on the screen? Only a picture of yours truly, legendary Irish comedian Mick Thomas. And it's a fucking close-up of me. And he's immediately, he's sending it to somebody on, on Facebook Messenger. And I go to him. I go, what the fuck did you take a picture of me for? Just like that. Now the train turns around to look like, oh. Because in New York, when you start shit like that, the people have put their head down like, I'm not here, nothing to do with me, la, 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 what's going on over here, right? They don't want to get involved in it. The whole train turned around like, oh, drama. Like, what the fuck did you take a picture of me for? And he goes, I didn't take a picture of you, I took a picture of the train. Now, that's what he said, and that's how he said it, by the way, right? And he goes, I didn't take a picture of you, because you didn't fucking take a picture of the train, you took a picture of me, because you just happened to be in the middle of the picture. I am the fucking picture. Now, that sounds like ego talking, but it ain't. He had the whole camera in my face. I was a picture. And he goes, no, it wasn't. You. I didn't take a picture of you. I took a picture of the train. He's like, whatever, whatever. Now, I grabbed the phone, and I just took the phone off him. I dropped it on the ground, and I smashed my foot as hard as I could into the phone, shattering the screen, making it look like a spider web. Now, let's look at some things before we pause. This is the part of the movie where they pause it and the narration kicks in or the flashback kicks in. So I've now taken this guy's phone. I dropped it. I didn't slam it on the ground. I dropped it on the ground and I smashed my foot into the phone. Phone shattered spider web screen. Let's talk about some things. Now, first off, I was worried. Me, who had my patience, my, my privacy invaded. I had, I was worried because this is going to be, look, this is going to look like a hate crime. 
It's going to look like a hate crime because the guy is gay. Now, here is where I walk a slippery slope. Here is where the wire that I'm walking is very fine. Well, Mick, how do you know it was a gay man? Huh? Well, here's how I knew it was a gay man because of the everything about him. Now, stereotypical, I know, I know. He was just gay as Christmas. He was gay. Now, Mick Thomas, as you know, has nothing against the gays. Loads of gay friends he do. Family members who are gay. Nothing against the gays. But this guy was fucking just, he was gay. Just, he was gay. Right? With the that gasping hands on his chest. Oh, my. Like a southern bell. Right? Like she heard the word shit for the first time. Oh, my stars, I do declare. He was gay. He was gay, right? So now I'm worried about, is this a hate crime? Other thing we need to take into consideration, Mick Thomas had been on a traveling fucking kick, getting to bed at 2 in the morning, getting up at 4 to go get your flights, constant round the clock, right? I've been up since 4 that morning, straight to Chicago, connecting flight to Baltimore, Baltimore, straight to Chicago, took a fucking train, and I had to walk two miles. Like, And the club arranges transportation, but I like walking the city. So... I go out and I did a killer show. I got to bed at 2 in the morning again. Up at 4 again we were to get the fucking train back because I had to get to straight to Orlando. I'm all over the place. So now we, we go right back to the moment, right? So I said, did you hear this cat? What? I'll let you out in a minute, mate. What? Fucking cats. So anyway, drop the... Smash the phone, screen up, and he goes, "What did you?" And he go, he gets up, right? He gets up to like to fucking go, and I put my hand on his chest, and I push him right back down the chair, and I go, "Sit your fucking ass down, or your face is gonna look like that fucking screen." And I said to him, "You're looking at it and shut up your ass." That's what I said to him, which would kind of look like he would enjoy it, right? Now I said all that. I said that to him. I did. I said that to him. I said it to him. But for all those people out there who go, Mick Thomas, ah, ah Mick, my, my friends mainly, they go, yeah, that, was, that was a homophobic thing to do and say. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Because trust me, I could have went, I could have really leaned into that. And nobody seems to be giving me credit on the growth that I didn't say any slurs, right? I mean, just because he likes a phone up his ass doesn't mean, he doesn't imply only gay people like phones in their ass, right? I've, right? I've. I put things in my ass over the years. In the shower, I go at least two knuckles in when I'm cleaning. At least two knuckles. My friends go, you're crazy to go two knuckles in. I like two knuckles in. I've been an experimental kid. I've had things in my bottom before. So and it doesn't matter. Straight, gay, men, women, we all have done stuff with our butts over the years. So... I didn't call him any slurs, and the fact that I said that means, you know, and, you know, he might like it up. What if you put up his ass and you call him and it goes on vibrate? That might be nice. That might be nice. That might be nice. So, all of a sudden, when I said that, these two construction workers who work for the CTA, which is the Chicago Transit Authority, I think, and they put their hand, one guy puts his hands on my chest, he goes, hey, man, come on, bro, he's not, you know, don't, don't, let it go, let it go. So the guy goes, oh, my stars, and he grabs his phone, and as the door opens for the next thing, he fucking scurries away like, like Gollum, but he just gets down that low, and he has his phone, and his phone's fucked, he's like, my precious, and he just fucks off, right, you know what I mean, he, he, he broke the phone, he did, he broke the phone, my precious, and he fucked off. Um, so, Right, and that was it. And I'm so I ride the train, Chicago, Chicago. Then I go through customs, right, or, or through security. So they 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 don't have a sense of humor there in that job, right? Now I get it. I understand that you're dealing with wankers all day long. It's a tough job. You know, you don't see anything, by the way. If you're in this day and age as security, you don't really see anything. You're just con con. What's the word? Confiscating. You're just confiscating. Confisc. I can't fucking talk. This cat is annoying me. What? You're just confiscating just things. That's what your job is to do, to go through a list of things that people aren't allowed to have. So my bag is going through the thing. Shoes are off. In the, I got dre fucking shoes you know, on the conveyor belt. 
then all of a sudden my bag comes out now Mick Thomas travels like I carry a shoulder bag everywhere I go I don't bring a fucking suitcase I don't need to check shit in I'm moving I'm wheeling I'm dealing so I get to the airport I get to the customs my bag goes through and all of a sudden the guy pulls the bag I go alright well there's nothing in there right but there's always a part of it alright when your bag gets pulled there's always a part of it that things like shit what do I have in that bag like do I have something bad in there anyway so I go in and uh, he pulls it aside and before and I, I'm I'm already wired from the guy and if you know anything about me Mick Thomas turns to humor when he's stressed when he's upset when he's sad when he's nervous and more importantly when he's tired so I immediately turn to joke so the guy said he goes I gotta look through your bag okay is there anything in here that could hurt me that's what he said and I said emotionally or physically because emotionally I do have a picture of me in there banging your wife huh eh? Eh? No. Didn't like that. Didn't like that joke. I almost missed my flight. He fucking went through the bag in every nook and cr- every corner. And then he took out my hair gel. And he said, you can't bring this hair gel on because it's too big. He goes, would you like to check your bag? And I went, yes. Yes, could you check my bag, please? Could you, could I, could you, sp- I want to spend $66 dollars on checking a bag for $2 hair gel. And he goes, really? Goes, no! Throw it fucking out, mate. What are you doing? Got to Orlando. Met up with uh, Dan. Dan Barry came on the road with me for the second half of the trip. We went to Disney for two days. Man, who doesn't love Disney for two days? Here's what I noticed, though. Uh, I read a statistic, uh, a, a quote, uh, uh, that in the, by the year... 20, 30, 80% of Americans, not the world, 80% of Americans will be obese. 80%. And I saw it at Disney. I saw it starts there. That's, that is, Disney is uh, ground zero for the obesity problem. Here he goes, having a go to fat people now. No, he ain't, man. I, you know me. Go live your life. Be happy. Do what you got to do. That's all I'm saying. But... It got this bad where I pointed out, like, even the staff now are re- really overweight. Like, I was walking through the park and Peter Pan was walking around. And he was a bit, he had a bit of timber on him. He had a bit of timber on him, right? It wasn't like, usually Peter Pan's, the character is so small that they usually get a female to play Peter Pan. Well, it should be. Females should play male roles. It's not that, you fucking liberal wanks. I'm not a righty, by the way. I just like to put that in there. You woke wank. Sorry, sorry about the liberal. We're all liberal in a way. You woke fucking idiots. It's not finally a woman should play. I haven't said that. The new Peter Pan movie is coming out and The Lost Boys. There's girls in The Lost Boys now. Because Disney are fucking hitting home runs. Um, so anyway, so the guy playing... So they usually play females to play Peter Pan because of the, the size. They're like the women are usually smaller frames. So therefore... Little Peter Pan is a little boy. Um, and that's usually what they do. Uh, so, that, yeah. He walked by. Chunky motherfucker, man. That was not Peter Pan. That was not. You know the way, the way his shadow tries to get away from him? That shadow was a big round shadow. That's all I'm saying. It just wasn't. You know? I'm just saying. That was that, that was my experience at Disney. I did have a good time. They had a blast. They always have a blast at Disney. Uh, get went in front of all the lines, you know, because I'm disabled. Um, we, you know, we had a blast at Disney, as I always do. In and out, in and out in the morning, out in the afternoon. That was it. Out in the afternoon, shows at New Smyrna Beach, Madcap Comedy Club, Friday, Saturday. Had a me a fucking ball. Saturday morning up the crack of dawn, flew to Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, another Zanies club. Wow, Zanies was fucking great. For everybody that came out last night, we had a blast. My buddy Claire came out to see us. She hanging out with Garth Brooks. She was the night before, and then slumming out with Mick Thomas and Sean Finnerty and Dan Barry the next night. We had a we had a blast. Everyone down there was just super cool. The clubs were great. The 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 people were great. Nashville is a lot of fun. Very cold, very cold weather down in Nashville, but uh. You know, I went to your Walmart in Nashville, as I tend to do. And uh, it's a new level of low, I think, that one. I, I do like on the Walmarts. Everyone, anyone knows me. Mick Thomas likes a good Walmart. 
But I wanted to go to all the the country country music hall of fame. I wanted to go to Johnny Cash Museum, and of course, none of the lads wanted to do have anything to do with that. They wanted to go to Walmart to just you know watch just to see it to make you feel feel better about yourself. Um, but yeah, it was you know what, man, and I just got in twenty minutes ago. I came right down here and started this podcast because it's now what two ten, and it's the episode's supposed to be out this morning. So, um, yeah, listen, that was it. Now, next week, up in Mohegan Sun Casino. Tickets are flying off the shelves for that one. Friday and Saturday and Sunday, me and Sean are back at it again in Orlando. At the Orlando Improv. So, come out. Come out. Get your tickets. It'll be a good show. I promise you we'll have a blast. Anyway, that's the episode. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing and sharing and just coming on back. I'll see you next time. Yeah. And as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.